good afternoon and welcome to Deep in Scripture. This is your host, Marcus Grodi. I'm the founder and president of the Coming Home Network International from where we're broadcasting, but you're hearing us over EWTN Radio. And uh, this is a program that uh, the way we're operating it now, it's essentially a continuation of our Journey Home program that EWTN, uh, EWTN's Journey Home program on Monday nights that I have the privilege of being a part of. And then what we do in Deep in Scripture is I've had an opportunity to invite the guests to continue on a little bit to talk now about Scripture, what difference it made in their journey, uh, their awakening to certain Scriptures, uh, how certain Scripture texts draw us closer to our Lord Jesus and His Church. And so given that, I've I've invited uh, Father Dave Harris to join us on Deep in Scripture. Hi, Marcus. Thank you for letting me be here today. It's good to have you here, and it's possible that the those listening to us on Deep in Scripture didn't hear the program on Monday night. Of course, they still can by going to EWTN.com uh, and get the replay. But for those that are not familiar, just a little summary of your bio. You were born and raised in the southeastern hills of Kentucky and uh, come from a long line of coal miners. I did, too. I had some uh, miners on my mother's side from England, Wow, uh, lead miners up in up in the middle parts of of Great Britain. Uh, Father Dave grew up Southern Baptist, served as a Southern Baptist pastor after being ordained in 1985 and 2002 after a decade of discernment. Father Dave entered into full communion with the Roman Catholic Church. In 2004, he completed a two-year postgraduate program in Catholic spirituality and also began serving as the director of ministries and administration at St. Barnabas Parish in Louisville, Kentucky. 2007, he graduated from St. Meinrad School of Theology with a Master of Theology Studies degree, and in September of 2008 was ordained a priest in the Archdiocese of Louisville. He is currently the assistant to the pastor at St. Aloysius Paris in Peewee Valley, Kentucky. You have to tell us where that name came from. (laughs) Father Dave also holds degrees in mechanical engineering and business administration, as well as a Master's of Divinity degree from Southern Baptist Seminary. He has been married 35 years to his beautiful wife, Pam, and they have two wonderful sons, David Jr., a pharmacist, and Grant, a doctoral student in psychology. His hobbies are gardening and reading. You and I have a lot in common, because I have an engineering degree, too. (laughs) Yes, I know know that. that. (laughs) Though I was in plastics, and you were were making the world run with your mechanical engineering. (laughs) Yeah, gears, gears, gears. And... uh, it's great to have you, Thank you on the program, and I know we talked about it Monday night, but uh, we're going to get into the scripture here in a moment, mm-hmm. uh, Father Dave, but I'm still uh, intrigued by your particular interest in Catholic spirituality, Yes, and I'm wondering if, you know, often um, opposites attract in the sense that you came from a tradition that had very little of that. Yes. Was it because of maybe the dearth of that, mm-hmm. that the spirit opened within you a desire for this Catholic spirituality? Because I know a lot mm-hmm. of people that come to the church that that isn't the main drawing card or even a big part of it. But for you, it, it seemed to be yes, crucial. absolutely. Yes. I think um, part of it is my personality. I'm a, I'm a mm-hmm. person with... I'm a passionate person about life and and love to hear people's stories of, of how they have connected with God and grown in their faith. And that just wasn't um, – always had a – I always had a deep love for God. But when I read the lives of the saints, there was a connection there, an inner connection. And most of – most of what we do is outward oriented, so to speak, in terms of activities and things in Western Christianity. But this opened the Christian spirituality. It opened up for me the other dynamic of the church that wasn't there, so so to speak, in the Protestant church. And uh, with the passion that I have and to read the saints and the love, the immense love they had for God, it just... It was such an eye-opening experience for me. Do you think from your study of the spiritual writings as well as the the spiritual concepts, if mm-hmm. you will, uh, that John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, and Father Laguerre Lagrange and other uh, 
great writers, Father Thomas Dubay, uh, and God rest his soul, a uh, great writer. Um, but there are a lot of people out there praying that have never heard of the Catholic spirituality. Yes. Never heard of the writings of any of these folks. Yes. Don't know the stages. Don't have never couldn't imagine what purgation of the senses means yes. or something. Um, but do they experience the levels? Yes. Well, it's not one of the nice things about John of the cross. Not only was did he have that deep spiritual level of intimacy with God, but he also was able to structure it, frame it, so to speak, give it perspective and focus. And uh, for somebody like myself who likes faith and reason, that was very important to me, and it helped me to see. But I will say it, it's, it's almost like a – I would consider it more like a primer yeah. in terms of understanding that, that theme, that run, but it, it comes to a point, I think, after a while, once you begin to understand some of it, that it's like just exist in it, yeah. just be in it. But you understand there's some, like we were talking a while ago, just like some people say, well, I don't feel God. Well, does that mean, what does that mean? And if you look at spirituality, Carmelite spirituality, particularly the absence of God doesn't mean that God is not there. But God is teaching you to draw closer to faith in faith, but it's important to understand those concepts, and it's people like John of the Cross that that can articulate that. Um, something interesting yesterday, I was reading on the Vatican website that um, St. John of Avila is going to, they're promoting him to be a new doctor, and they see him as being a part of the new evangelization, hmm. and uh, he was a very contemplative type of person. And I was reading one of the blogs, and, and there was this comment that, well, Here's a guy that's talking about the radiance of Christ. What's that got to do with anything? I'm thinking that's everything. That's everything. That's that relation. That's that communion yeah. with God. And uh, so recovering that and instilling that because our society, I feel, is looking for that. I think that we don't – I think that's why there's such a popularity today with Eastern religions uh, and some for some people New Age movements – Things people are trying to connect inward, inside, because, you know, we're a human doing and we're a human being. And there's there's both of those. And, and our Lord, we see that ebb and flow in, in, his, uh, in his life. And so people are wanting that connection, and, and yeah. I think it's a great opportunity. The, uh, one of the reasons I found the spiritual writers helpful to me in my own prayer life uh, the best way I can describe it, which still is far uh, inferior than uh, what a mystic would describe, because mm-hmm. I'm not a mystic, uh, which is a gift in itself, if, if, yes. you, if you are that. And that is, um, I look back on the days in uh, many pounds ago when I was a runner. Um, I was always tall and, and, and enjoyed running. And one thing I learned is that if you're a long distance runner, uh, something happens to you, your body, after a couple miles. Yes. And all of a sudden, where the first mile and second mile, you're about ready to die, you feel <laughs> like it, something changes. Yes. And it's almost, in a sense, like you forget you're running. Yes. Your, your body has, yes. has reached a level of which. The, the way your lungs are working, the way yes. your heart is beating, the, the combination of your whole being is on a different plane. Yes. And now all of a sudden where the mile one and two, you couldn't think you could make another step. Now you might think, well, I could do five, six, seven, or eight. Yes. And I remember the first time I experienced that was exactly that. I thought I was going to go out for a three-mile run. The first mile was a bear. <laughs> Second mile... I mean, I, I, that particular day I was chugging. When the when the next level kicked in, I ran yes. 13 miles. <laughs> and, and but how does somebody who's never read more, never run more than a mile, yes, understand the long distance runner? Mm. Excellent point. Um, it, good, it, good question. Very good question. I think 
think one thing is that it's a part of grace. I think it's a part of God's grace in helping us to come to these. Like I said, I I would never have come to St. John of the Cross, but he came to me yeah. in, that, in that sense of here's his, here's his writing. And, and I hope, too, that we see this carried out more in the life of the church. There's a greater emphasis, and I think the new evangelization is going to talk more about that relationship. I like what Cardinal Worrell said the other day. He's talking about fervor. You know, there's a sense of passion. There's a sense mm -hmm. about life in your life, you know, that, that connects to God, and, and, you, and you sort of radiate that to other people. Yeah. But I think the church will, I think there's going to be some movement toward that. Um, well, one of the people are attracted to that. I mean, it's, it's our life. It's our relationship. Well, just as in the running, the, the witness of men and women who run 5, 7, 8, 10, 15 miles, and they have a witness of what life is like yes. on that plane Yes. so that it helps the person who's barely able to run one yes. mile yes. know yes. that if they discipline themselves, they do yes. what's necessary yes. to prepare their body, mind, and soul for that, uh, the endurance they know that on the other side of one mile, on the other side of two miles, yes. that there's a there's a di there, there's a difference. Yes, these great spiritual writers encourage us to keep going, yes. keep trying, absolutely, keep the discipline, learn more. Yes, because you recognize that that second level that they write about is what's called a passive work of God. Yes, it's something you can't make happen. It's an exactly. intimacy. Exactly. of a contemplative reality of the exactly. of the presence of God that can happen. Yes. They've been there. Yes. So they say just keep going. That's right. Keep praying. That's right. Keep the discipline going. And I think we'll see I think we'll see too. I, I read more coming from the Holy Father and stuff, the importance of rediscovering the saints. And I think that's another yep. thing that really helps in that area to to see that and to make that heart connection. In fact, I want to recommend a brand new book. I just got a copy of it, just in the process of reading. But because of the author, I know it's got to be good. Yes. Father Benedict Grishel. Oh, yes. Brand new book called, I think it's called The Saints in My Life. Ooh. And he gives 20 or 30 saints that have made a difference in his life. Yes. Uh, one of which was St. Benedict Joseph Labray, to whom yes. he named, he chose the name for himself, St. Wow. Because he's Father Benedict Joseph. So again, as you said, the lives of the saints, and that's what yes. he's saying in that book. Yes. That these saints uh, in his life challenged him in different ways and yes. to keep going when it got tough. Yes. Or, or to challenge him when he had bought into areas that he shouldn't have in his life. All right, well, you've chosen a, a passage that doesn't specifically have to do with the spiritual life, but it's a it's a key one. And before we read Matthew 28, 18 through 20, uh, Father uh, Dave, why? Well, why this passage? What, what, what was the significance about this passage in your own journey? Well, when I was asked the question, um, gosh, there's so many scriptures. <laughs> of course, <laughs> I thinking, of course. I could, we, we hit some of them in Journey Home, but the, there's... A, I think out of that part of passion and that desire to see people grow in their relationship with Christ and with God is so important. And so this this is this is Christ's mandate, it's his calling to us to go out into the world and to make disciples. And it's uh, it took me a long time actually, Marcus, to quit saying evangelism. <laughs> And start saying evangelization. So, uh, because I was used to the that term evangelism, which is more of an action of sharing your faith. Where evangelization in the Catholic context is much more broad. It's wherever Christ is and bringing Christ into that situation, and that makes it an attitude. It is an attitude, and it's not just. Uh, one action, although invitation is a part of it, sure. it is a it is an ongoing process of conversion, and it it really uh, fired me up. <laughs> well, let me read the passage for our audience, and then uh, and then Father will look at the passage. I'm uh, going to begin with verse 18 through uh, the end of Matthew, and of course the context is uh, you know the the eleven disciples 
as it says in verse yes. 16, uh, went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. Um, which it's funny because it, it's really assuming a lot that we don't know about. Yes. But the, you know, he has been preparing them for this great moment uh, in which we know this is, this is before his ascension, you know, before he's, he's going to the Father. Um, and it says in verse 17, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And then verse 18, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Mm. Now, first of all, uh, I'm sure you were aware of that passage when you were a Baptist pastor. Yes, absolutely. Well, how'd you deal with that passage as a Baptist Baptist? Well, I think there's, in Protestant thought, there's there's two components. There's evangelization, sharing. Well, I was, I've gotten used to saying that. Evangelism, which is sharing your faith. And then the second part is what is more drawn out as making disciples or yeah. called discipleship. So there's two components, but in the Catholic Church, it puts them together and calls them evangelization because the invitation is the first part, but that's only the first part. And then comes the conversion where we turn and we, and we direct our hearts and our lives to God, and then we are incorporated into the life of the church and the sacraments. And then we go out and we serve. So it's it's all it's an all-encompassing thing. And so you think more in terms that's the you think of evangelization. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of our our Catholic folks today there is it's a word that an uncomfortable word, something that I've discovered because of the connotations that that go with it. Sometimes where people have been very imposing on other people and, um, you know, that kind of thing. But it's actually, like as I shared with you earlier, that when I read the evangelization in the modern world by Pope Paul VI, he put it together. Hmm. He put it, he put it together. And how the, that evangelization is the fundamental mission of the church, sharing the gospel. Now, the summit of the church is the Eucharist, but the central mission of the church is evangelization. It's that going forth and telling others about Christ and sharing Christ in all situations. So that's for people who do not know Christ. That's for people who have been in the church for a long time. And uh, it's for it's for all. It is for all, sharing Christ in all situations and of course helping them know the truth uh, i was just thinking of a passage in first timothy chapter 2 where paul you know writing to his 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 young bishop yes um in which he says this is good and is acceptable in the sight of god our savior who desires all men to be saved and to come yes. to the knowledge of of the truth. Yes, absolutely. And that's, we're very committed to that. Absolutely. Now, as a Calvinist, I struggled with that passage yes. because one of the cores of Calvinism is that God died for the chosen. Yes. Uh, and we then the, the hyper-Calvinist said he didn't die for the the unchosen, you know, there was this limited atonement yes. idea yes. amongst Calvin's followers, and so this idea that he died for everyone yes. was was tough. Yes, or that God desires all to be saved, which sometimes the universalists want to say, well, he, he, all are saved. Right, right. It doesn't matter what you do; you can't really lose it. All are saved because God loves you all. Uh, but yet, this call. And I'm wondering, uh, Father Dave, again, this comes out in the passage we're looking at, and maybe you want to wait till later to jump okay. to this, but, but but this passage, again, also emphasizes that it's not just a knowledge of a set of principles or a, a, a Jesus alone, mm. it's all. Yes, yes. 
it's yes, the, it is. It's this fullness of truth. It's the it's the fullness. Can I read a couple of Please. passages? I think that really, Pope Paul the sixth. This was a this was a real confirming thing for me. He says we wish to confirm once more that the task of evangelizing all people constitutes the essential mission of the church. It is a task and mission which the vast and profound changes of present day society make all more urgent. Evangelizing is in fact the grace and the vocation proper to the church, her deepest identity. She exists in order to evangelize, that is to say, in order to preach and teach, to be the channel of the gift of grace, to reconcile sinners with God and to perpetuate Christ's sacrifice in the mass, which is the memorial of his death and glorious resurrection. When I read that, I said, I want to be a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was convinced. I mean. Well, let me say something. When I was in seminary, and I went to an evangelical Protestant seminary, we were very committed to evangelization. Yes. In fact, I would say every course I had at seminary somehow was about evangelization, mm -hmm. the history course. Mm -hmm. okay, how, how's it going to help me communicate the gospel? Yes. Counseling, yes. studying Greek was well, yes. going to help me uh, you know, translate the passages to make sure that I'm giving the authentic interpretation of Scripture yes. so that they truly know the truth, as we yes. read in the passage. Um, I've talked to Catholics Mm -hmm. that got the sense that that wasn't true of their seminary training. Mm -hmm. That w there seems to be among some not as strong an emphasis on evangelization. Yes. yes. Uh, maybe for a long time. Yes. First of all, it, it, from your I experience, would, would you agree? And I do you see a change? And I see a change. I, we live in one of the most exciting times in the life of the church. And we're living in the time of the new evangelization. And because evangelization is, is a process of ongoing, of continuing conversion in our life, the church realizes and recognizes that now is the time. And I'll go back to Cardinal World again. Um, he was quoting from the Holy Father. Now is the time that the Holy Father senses the movement of the Holy Spirit to repropose the gospel in a new way to all the Catholics who have become inactive in their faith. But he, the Holy Father has a sense of the Holy Spirit, the movement of that. And so it's the time. It is the time. And um, it, it's, it's truly exciting. I, I, let me read a, one more Please. quote out of here. Um, Pope John Paul, he says, what must we do? He says, we must imitate the good shepherd and give ourselves without rest for the salvation of souls. Without forgetting material charity and social justice, we must be convinced that the most sublime charity is spiritual charity. That is the commitment for the salvation of souls. All souls are saved with prayer and sacrifice. This is the mission of the church. And then Pope Benedict said, no effort should be spared in seeking out those Catholics who have fallen away and those who know little or nothing of Jesus Christ. By implementing a pastoral plan which welcomes them and helps them realize that the church is a privileged place of encounter with God and also through a continuing process of catechesis. What is required in a, mission, in a word is a mission of evangelization capable of engaging all the vital energies present in this immense flock. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> yes. That is exciting. I mean, that, that's where we are. And, and, the, and the Holy Father senses the Spirit, the moving of the Spirit, and the, the creation of uh, the, the office that they have in, in Rome now for the new evangelization. We're going to pause there, David. Okay. Father David, that's a great place, and we'll pick up on that again. Our guest today on Deep in Scripture is Father Dave Harris, former Baptist, and of course, this is your host, Marcus Grodi, and you're hearing us on EWTN, your global Catholic radio network.
get an insider's look at the latest information from EWTN, sign up for WINGS, EWTN's weekly email newsletter. Get the latest information about live events, special features, and guests. Connect with EWTN on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Just go to EWTN.com and click on the WINGS link to sign up. Don't miss a minute of all that's happening at EWTN. Get your WINGS today. Hi, this is Jerry Usher reminding you to listen to Vocation Boom Radio Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern exclusively on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Each week I bring you dynamic interviews with bishops, priests, vocation directors, even seminarians and those who support them, all in an effort to assist the Holy Spirit in what is truly a vocation boom around the world. That's Vocation Boom Radio Saturdays at 5 p.m. Eastern only on EWTN Radio. CH Resources is excited to offer you Marcus Grodi's latest book, Thoughts for the Journey Home. If you're not Catholic, but are looking seriously at the Catholic Church, or if you've recently entered the Church, this book will provide you with wisdom and encouragement for the journey. And if you're a lifelong Catholic, it makes a great gift for family and friends you're hoping will come home. To order a copy, visit our website at chnetwork.org or call us at 1-800-664-5110. Don't forget to watch the Journey Home program with Marcus Grodi on EWTN. Each week, Marcus meets new guests who have journeyed to the Catholic faith from many backgrounds. Be challenged and encouraged as they witness to how their love for the truth of Jesus Christ has brought them into full communion with the Catholic Church. That's the Journey Home program on EWTN, live on Monday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome back to Deep in Scripture. This is Marcus Groda, your host, and we're joined today by Father Dave Harris, former Baptist, and we're looking at Matthew uh, 28, yes. the Great Commission, is yes. what we, we understood it as. And um, what I'm wondering, you've just given us a few quotes from from the, the popes, yes. which would not have carried much weight to you back when you were a Baptist, no. but you were certainly committed to evangelization. Think for a second, if you would. Uh, imagine yourself a Baptist. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to the idea if you're hearing that the the Pope Benedict and Pope uh, John Paul and that the church is escalating their commitment to the new evangelization? <laughs> How would you respond to that? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> let me tell you this, Marcus. We are practicing the new evangelization in our parish, and people are responding to it wholeheartedly. And there's a sense of renewal that's taking place in the lives of people because they're, they're finding, they're rediscovering the gospel in new ways that they, that they had not discovered it in the form before. And so it is, it, it, it's uh, some people when you talk about it, uh, evangelization, they think, well, you're a little awkward as a Catholic, but it's our core. It is the essence of who we are. And, and so I think one thing that's happened that's really helped that you were asking a while ago about where we are today is that for so long the church has seen evangelization as what they call the mission agentis, the mission to the world. But now the church realizes that in continents like Europe, like the Americas, that we have to go back and repropose the gospel to people, and and it's working. It's working. It, which it, it that's not a surprise. <laughs> the gospel is good news. It yeah. truly is good news, and everybody needs a dose of good news today. Yeah, and for many, the gospel message is merely Jesus. Yes and not a church. And if you would talk about that, I mean, the, that evangelizing well, means yes. not just bringing people to Jesus. Well, one of the things it, that's key is called, when you look at Catholic evangelization, it is an ongoing process of conversion. Now, I like the distinction, distinction the word kerygma. Kerygma is sort of the, the basic message of the life, burial, death, and resurrection 
of Jesus Christ. And then there's what we call the Didache, which is the teaching of the church. Once you, once you hear the kerygma, once you hear the basic gospel, the claims of Christ and receiving Christ, then there is that integration into the life of the community. It doesn't, it doesn't stop there. That's, that's a big difference in Catholic evangelization because it is a process that is ongoing that leads us literally out of this life <laughs> and yeah. into the next. And so it's, uh, it, it's, a, big, it's a big difference, but it's all encompassing. It's part of, part of being evangelized is in reproposing the, the message of Christ in the church to into active Catholics today is this very thing. Is, what does it mean to be in the church? What are the what is what are the sacraments? What do they mean? What is community? What is Eucharist? Uh, it's an all-encompassing thing that centers upon the mission of Christ. And what I discerned when I became a Catholic in my understanding of even the issue of salvation, yes, was that as Catholics we recognize that. The idea of salvation is not merely what's going to happen after I die. Exactly. That in fact, even in most of the scriptural contexts, the the use of the word salvation is mostly referring to our movement from our yes. previous life to our present life. Yes. I'll, I'll give a couple good examples of that, Father Dave, and then if you want to reflect... As a Protestant, I always took Ephesians 2, 8 mm, good one. to be referring to the end of life. For by grace mm -hmm. you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. For are his work is created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. I always interpret that, you know, for by grace you've been saved, thinking to the end of life. Yes. But what he's actually talking about is that you guys were saved out of paganism, yes. not because you did great works as a pagan, but by mercy you are now in the body of Christ. Absolutely. That's evangelization. Yes. In that same passage I read a moment ago when he said, God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, that's not only referring to salvation at the end of life, Absolutely. but he wants everyone out there. Yes to move from where they are into the body yes. by grace yes. through faith yes. so that they can come to know yes. the knowledge of the truth. Yes. That's evangelization. Yes. That, and that's the love of God, <laughs> isn't it? That's the yeah. love of God. He wants us to know him, to experience him in this life. And uh, one of the things that just came to my mind when you were reading those passages is just the very concept of church. There's not the church on earth, and then there's this church in heaven, and there's a great divide. But I, I really appreciate that about the Catholic Church. There's, there's the church visible, the church invisible, but it's all together. And so the process doesn't end at death, but it's a, it's a continuing thing. And so when we, when we celebrate Mass, we celebrate it with all the saints. And it's... Uh, Wow, it's <laughs> wonderful. I mean, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. What importance is it to you, Father Dave, in your own journey from your Baptist world into the Catholic, of course now as a priest, mm -hmm. when he begins the statement in Matthew 28 with the phrase, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Mm. It seems to me that that is the starting off point That's the foundation. to evangelization. That's right. And then to think that the Lord would entrust this to the church and to us. And so the church is the embodiment of that mission, of that message. And it's, uh, that's one of the things I love about the Catholic Church, again, is that concept of community and that we're doing things together. It's not an individual kind of thing but we're we're moving forward and Christ has the authority he has he has made the way and now he has entrusted the church he has brought the church to bring this message and and it is so important to do that now i wanted to make sure that your translation 
doesn't have go ye therefore and make committees. No, no, absolutely not. No, make make disciples. <laughs> and we joke about that, right? But there are a lot of people think that's what the church is all about. Oh, yes, yes. That, that we can emphasize, and I'm not in this case just pointing a finger at priests yes. or deacons, yes. but we laity. Yes. That our Lord gave at least three commands. Yes. To uh, do this remembrance of me, so we have the sacramental life of the church, to uh, abide in me and I in you from John 15, yes. our intimate, yes. personal, spiritual growth. Yes. And go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Yes. All three are important. Yes. And interconnected. Yes, very much interconnected. The Cardinal Dulles, he's the one that brought this home for me. And I, and he he goes to that passage, he says, go so what is what is our motivation for evangel evangelization it's because the lord asked us to and he said to go everywhere didn't he and that's and that's what paul did you know and it took corinth corinth and ephesus and colossae and all these places and so he gives us that mandate that calling to go and that's making disciples and part of that and that and that's the mission of the church is to do is to do that and and it is easy today it is very easy to get caught up in structure and like you say committees and things like that <laughs> but he's this is what the lord said and and cardinal dulles really boy he just brought that home to me and uh in a very special very special way you know it's almost in a way ironic if not funny that Jesus had to say this at all. Think about this. I mean, these men who walked with Christ for three years, walked with Jesus for three years. They yes. weren't sure he was the Christ. Yes. They were struggling with that issue, right? Yes. Because the Spirit hadn't come yet, as John says. But after he's resurrected and appears to them, and they know, yes. uh, and they've received the Spirit, and so these men know something that is life-changing, world-changing. Yes. Why should they need to be told to go out and tell the world? <laughs> and maybe, in fact, they were ready to do that. In fact, we see in the beginning of Acts when they're Take saying, off. we're ready to go. <laughs> That's right. But he's saying, and you've got to wait a little bit yes. for the Spirit. For the Holy but I, Spirit. In some sense, I'm thinking that maybe it's also because it wasn't merely go out there and tell them all you've experienced, mm -hmm. that you are to go and you are to baptize them. Yes. And you are to Very teach much. them all. Yes. There's a, th there is a structure. Yes, absolutely. The importance of the sacraments, the yes. importance of baptism. Now, yes. talk a bit about in the evangelization of the world, the absolute central uh, aspect of baptism. Well... I think uh, we have many examples in Acts where it said, repent and be baptized, <laughs> Paul and, and others. And baptism is an essential part. It's the, it's the entrance into the church. That's why we put the font at the entrance of the church. It's coming into the church. And the process, the, the beginning of that process of salvation is to repent and to receive baptism. And for us as Catholics, uh, with infants, as we talked earlier, that is coming, receiving baptism, and coming under the care of parents and godparents mm -hmm. until you get to the sacrament of confirmation where you confirm that yourself, and then you receive greater, uh, greater gifts and graces that go along with that. But it's, it's absolutely, I mean, that's, that's the church. <laughs> yeah, and we the see the church was born, you know. Yeah. It was born, and this is the mission. Acts one, Jesus says, "Here's what you're to do. This is where you start. You're going to be my witnesses." Now wait on the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit came, they went. They went, and they proclaimed Christ, and and that's really important too in everything we've been saying, Marcus. Is that. Today, uh, there's sort of a we, we tend at times to shy away from proclaiming the name of Christ. We, you know, use uh, the, is the uh, phrase use use as few words as possible. 
um, coming from St. Francis, although I've been told that he never said that. We don't have that in writing. <laughs> but what you find is it is true. We live the life, and our life touches people. But we have to say the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, and, you know, I like what Paul wrote in 116 of Romans. He says, For I'm not ashamed of the good news. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. And so today, the church, the Holy Father is calling upon the church to live our faith and to share that name with others. Let's take an, another break, Father David. Then when we come back, maybe we could talk about, okay, how can we help uh, the faithful live out this calling okay. more effectively in Great. their lives? All right. You're listening to Deep in Scripture. This is your host, Marcus Grodi, joined today by Father Dave Harris, and you're hearing us on EWTN, the Global Catholic Radio Network. EWTN.com is online with program information, the latest views, Pope Benedict XVI, plus tools for living the faith like prayers, Catholic Q&A, and other resources. Log on today to EWTN.com. The Coming Home Network International is a nonprofit Catholic lay apostolate dedicated to helping Protestant clergy and laity come home to the Catholic Church. It was founded by Marcus Grodi, the host of this program, as well as the Journey Home television program on EWTN. If you are interested in learning more about our Catholic faith, or if you know someone who is interested in becoming Catholic, please visit our website at www.chnetwork.org or contact us at 1-800-664-5110. Welcome back to Deep in Scripture. This is your host, Marcus Grodi, joined by Father Dave Harris, former Baptist pastor, now a Catholic priest down in the Louisville Diocese, serving as assistant pastor. Assistant to the pastor in the great parish of St. Aloysius in Pee Wee right. Valley, and <laughs> Pee Wee is a bird. <laughs> we, that's right. I was wondering. <laughs> We got baseball players, but Pee Wee is a bird. Okay, we well, got you, we got you. <laughs> there must have been a mess of those when the yeah, pioneers came right. and uh, uh, got tired of those Pee Wees. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> they weren't they weren't putting their tents under the Pee Wee nests. <laughs> All right, our good Lord, who established his church in the apostles, centered around Peter. Yes. In this passage, left with eleven of them. Yes. Because we know the story. Yes. Uh, soon to be 12, yes. we know what happens in early Acts. And it gives them the great commission, which has been handed down to us. What can we do more effectively to carry this out? Wow. That's a, that's a very profound question. Once again, I draw, draw back on the wisdom of the church. And the church is calling us today, today, to a new effort, a new re-evangelizing, a new reproposing of the gospel to all those who are inactive in the church. Because remember, salvation is a process of ongoing conversion. It's a process of coming into the church. It's a process of, it begins with Jesus, but it's a, and it, but it's a process of receiving the sacramental life, being integrated in the community life, uh, sharing doing good works in the world, being, you know, bringing about good things that are happening in the world. So that's really important. In that Luke 15 passage where I mentioned a little while ago about Christ calling us to abide in him yes. and he in us, we have that intimate relationship, which can seem to be for some me people, the summation of all their life, their Christian life. It's about yes. me and Jesus, about yes. me getting close to him, about me growing in holiness. It's all good stuff. Yes. But he did say in there, apart from me, you can do nothing. Yes. And how do we grow intimate with him except through the sacraments? Mm. That's why we want to reach out to everyone out there to make sure they have the graces of the Catholic sacraments. Yes. The sacraments are essential. They are absolutely necessary, uh, instituted by Christ, and give us, like you said, the graces that we need. I uh, was doing a homily this past week, and the storm that came up in the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus was in the boat, 
and people were, the disciples were very afraid of what was going to happen. And yet Jesus reminds them, I'm in the boat with you. And, yeah. and it's like every time that we receive the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, it reminds me that I experienced the real presence of Christ. He's in the boat with me. And so the sacrament, the, the life of the sacraments, uh, and other things uh, like Eucharistic adoration, very important, benedicts, all of those kinds of things are very important and essential part of what we do. I mean, it's the fullness, it's the fullness of the church. You know, a lot of it is our attitude. Um, if we truly appreciated what we have, why wouldn't we share it? Yes. I mean, that's part of the calling Yes, is to share. I, I really think one thing that's happened in my conversation with Catholics everywhere, there's a, there's a, there's a sense, uh, it's a misplaced understanding. There's a sense of not wanting to impose beliefs. Uh, like what John Paul said, we don't, we or. Paul VI said, we don't impose, but we propose our faith. We're not ashamed of our faith, as Paul says, but we propose that faith. But there's that sense, I think, that there's a carryover of that. But it's realizing that, I like what Cardinal World said, is it's, it's just inviting somebody to come to church. And yeah. I've, got in, I've got into a mode now that every day when I'm in Louisville, I invite somebody to church, <laughs> somebody that's evangelization, yeah, and that's uh, and it, and you know what, some of them come because it isn't merely inviting someone to learn about Jesus. I think that's again that that's part of it, but the church is Jesus Christ. Yes, Fam and form. by baptism we body are a member of, of the body of Christ. Yes, right. And so we're inviting them to discover the body of yeah. Christ to our Lord in the gospel, to our Lord in the sacraments, yeah. our Lord in the body. I yes. mean, that's, it's, it's all of that. Yes. Uh, of course, uniquely and in, in a very miraculously unique way in the Eucharist, of course. Yes. But you and I are sitting here, and, and we have the, the Lord Jesus within us. Yes. So the body of Christ is here, two or more gathered. Yes. There we are. I can't remember the name of the saint, but there was a spiritual writer who, I don't know if it was St. Benedict, talked about God would be disappointed if when we stood before him our hands were empty. Mm. Do you remember hearing about that? that and can't. I can't remember it, but it was the idea that when we come toward to heaven, we are not to come alone. Yes, yes. Our calling is is to have our hands full yes. of friends and neighbors that we have invited, strangers, yes. the weak, the poor, yes. the lame. Yes. That's our calling. Yes. And it's, and it's so simple to do. It's so simple to do. It's just striking up a conversation and saying, inviting someone. I, I was really impressed, brag a little bit on the parish the other night. We had our, <laughs> we had our monthly new members meeting. And I, I go around, I said, what attracted you to this parish? Why are you here? And every family said somebody in the community or somebody at work said good things were happening at this parish. You need to come. And I, and I thought, there you go. There's the kernel. There's the essence. You, you're living that life, but you're sharing that faith because the church is so wonderful. The church is so – the sacraments, the, the teaching of the church, the mission, it's, it's such a wonderful thing. Such a wonderful thing. Well, our, our responsibility indeed to reach out uh, and not presume. I mean, there really is the danger yeah. that we just presume we don't want to impose our thinking right. on someone else. Uh, you know, if we do that, we might uh, offend somebody. And so, you know, yes. we let it go. There's a verse in, in 1 Timothy, which is... Um, is sounds on the surface to be a problem where Paul says we have our hope set mm. on the living God who is the Savior yes. of all men yes. especially 
of those who believe. Yes. Now that sounds strange because I thought it was only those who believe, not just especially. <laughs> He's a savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Well, what does he mean by that? And the way I've taken that mm -hmm. is that people who've never heard of Jesus, yes, it doesn't automatically mean they're damned. Absolutely. That in the mercy of God, we Catholics believe that God has put his, his seed yes. in everyone. In other yes. words, we're all created in the image of God. Yes. So the seed of faith is there. So God can, in his mercy, save someone outside the church. If yes. they are saved, they're th saved through Christ yes. and his church. Yes. But it also implies that not everybody who believes will be saved. Right. Jesus said, just because you said, Lord, Lord. It, it, it calls for our understanding and our response by grace in our choice. Conversion. So we need to make sure that we don't just presume people yes. out there. Yes. Well, God's going to be good. They're a good person. Yes. No, we've got to make sure. And yes. the only way they will know yes. is if we either let them see and let them hear. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's. And I wonderful. especially think of where you're living down in Kentucky. I mean, there are a lot of. Uh, missionary work in Kentucky that reached out to the Native Americans as well oh, as yes. the pioneers that came yes. out there that had no faith. And what we need today, Marcus, is to go back to Europe, to go back into the Americas. I mean, the second largest population, religious population, is inactive Catholics. Millions, millions. Yeah. We need to go back and repropose the gospel to them and so that they might come into the fullness of the life of the church. And uh, praise be to God that the church, the Holy Father sees that now is the time to do that. Yeah, there were certainly a lot of Catholics as well as non-Catholic Christians who uh, assume millions that they've got enough or that I was born into the church. Yes. Therefore I've arrived and yes. I'm a good person. Yes. And, and yet they've never truly accepted our Lord yes. and, and nor uh, experienced the graces and changed their life to walk in line with, with how we are called to live in the Spirit. Father David, thank you for joining us on thank the program, you. for your sharing with us from this important passage and, and the Lord's blessings on your work. Thank you. And to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Deep in Scripture. If you'd like to learn more about our work, go to chnetwork.org. On the website, you'll find out all kinds of things we do in the Coming Home Network. Thank you for joining us, and God bless you. See you again next week.